Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. Fanta Graphics recently had published a uh, volume 9 of their anthology series now with this um, a pretty fantastic and colorful um, cover from one um, Raquel Jacques. And Raquel Jacques had a story, a long story here in this book as well about uh, gone relationships, ex-boyfriends and, and stuff like that done in this very interesting manner, uh, very in your face, uh, very experimental. But I don't want to talk about that because there's at least, there's a lot of interesting stuff in it, but a very uh, charming uh, little homage to Basil Wolverton done by Nova Van Skyver as well. And here it is. Um, yeah. Space Hawk lands on a distant planet where a weird alien creature grabs him and uh, makes him and uh, uses him uh, as some kind of action figure to play with. But as you know, Space Hawk will always be um, victorious in the end. This is a pretty unusual uh, story for Noah Van Skyver. Um, of course, because of the subject matter and uh, secondly, because of the coloring here, he uses some kind of um, computer coloring, I guess, uh, which is very fine and nice. But I usually like his uh, weird watercolor approach even more. Even though I um, heard him speaking on his channel about his new book, some kind of uh, stuff uh, involved uh, with the Mormon history and Joseph Smith and so uh, And there he said he uses uh, the computer coloring for his the story as well. So let's see how this uh, will uh, pan out eventually. But in terms of subject matter, he um, usually goes for stories that have more or less to do with him. Uh, and the whole Mormon trope and uh, his interest for the Mormon um, church is, of course, autobiographically uh, because he was uh, raised in a Mormon family with many kids um, and that you can only uh, only can see his mother has a, a reason because his father left the family once. Um, one dirty tree is, of course, a uh, child, children language for 133, and they had some kind of rotten tree in front of their house here. Um, and there's this house here. And uh, just to tell you what kind of stalker I am, uh, somewhere in this book, uh, he mentions the address, uh, the proper address for this house, and I looked it up in Google Maps, and the house uh, to be honest with you, looks way more cleaner uh, and and more solid uh, than in Noah Van Skyver's drawing. But I guess the, his family was poor, and so yeah, all the rooms uh, he and his siblings grew up in uh, were a bit in a rough state. Here we have Harvey, uh, Noah Van Skyver's dad, who was a lawyer but once, but lost his job. Um, so. His mom actually could work, uh, and maybe she wanted to work, but the Mormon believe uh, didn't allow her to provide for the family because this is the role of the father. So they were some kind of uh, in some kind of trap, um, which they couldn't work out, and and eventually the father uh, left uh, the family, which has obviously. Uh, left a big mark on Noah Van Skyver and his siblings. Uh, fortunately, this heavy, more depressing stuff is only one aspect of this book here, One Dirty Tree. Uh, there's much more stuff in it, more lighthearted, uh, fonder memories of his childhood, like them playing uh, T-Rex in the backyard, or Noah Van Skyver's first kiss here, for an example, and the um, complaints of the mother of that girl here to Noah Van Skyver's mother. Your son kissed my daughter full on the lips. How dare he? And uh, Noah Van Skyver's mother's uh, real cool reaction on that. Give me a five here. 
Um, I think it's a bit dangerous to live around Neuerwinskyver because uh, you sooner or later will find yourself in uh, one of his stories. He turns everything into one or the other story. I have the impression, uh, for an instance, this is an ex-girlfriend of him and here he is involved in some, yeah, a uh, little uh, small talk which turns in pretty quickly in some kind of interrogation about his job uh, when he says I'm a cartoonist uh, and yeah um, receives a pretty uh, skeptical reaction from this lady here so he feels a bit like being some kind of monster um, and this is a great and funny way of uh, using them the means of cartooning in a very simple but very effective way and simple and effective and fluid and um yeah very natural these are all adjectives and words that come to my mind when i uh, when i look at uh noah van Skyver's work by the way one dirty tree was published by uncivilized books a very neat and nice hardcover highly recommended like i obviously can recommend everything by uh, noah van Skyver from noah van Skyver. Um, if you want to have just a glimpse into noah van Skyver's universe first i uh, can recommend blamo uh, his um, anthology series um, even though I paid a, a bit of a postage for these uh, issues here, I got them from a John Porcelino's outfit, A Spit and a Half. They tend to get bigger and uh, thicker with each issue, which is a good thing, but it doesn't mean that uh, Blamo 6 here, for an instance, uh, isn't worth your buck because Norvan Skyver is a master of many things, but in particular, I feel. He is a master of the short format. He is able to uh, convey a lot of atmosphere and emotion uh, just on one page. In this particular um, instance here of melancholy uh, about a lost girlfriend or a lost um, gone relationship. So, and in Blamo number um, nine there was one of my personal favorites of uh, all time here this 19th century cartoonist uh, story is pretty great because he imagines himself in a, a time where uh, being a cartoonist was a much more um, highly regarded uh, job in society maybe it was so maybe it wasn't um, but the story that I wanted to show you here, this is a nice drawing of Van Skyver in nature. The nature here, this uh, little bomber story. The story is packs so many things into it. A nice little romance sto uh, story. Um, a story about this uh, young man here finding in a way his uh, own creativity. Um, with some irony uh, involved and a little crime story in the back as well and uh, yeah it's over so after some pages and you had the feeling or have the feeling that you've read a full um, prose novel um, actually and here's the newest iteration of Blamo that I own uh, I'm pretty sure there are some new out Blamo number 10 um, hear about some siblings um, fighting about the heritage of their father who was a cartoonist so this cartoonist theme uh, is a red thread uh, throughout many of Noah Van Skyver's works in the end we have a little story or maybe you can call it a report of things about Noah's uh, visit um, at his father's um uh, house or where he now lives um, after he had left his family so many years ago and so that Noah Van Skyver can talk about his anger uh, towards his dad and uh, all that stuff 
it's a, yeah I, I think it's a step in the right to the right direction between them and somehow a bit of comforting or, or soothing if this is the right word for us readers as well because uh, if you have read uh, through Noah van Skyver's books here you got the impression that this father-son uh, relationship really uh, had hurt him and has been a problem for him ever since. And a point that always triggers his creativity, which is in a weird sense, a good thing. Um, another bit of autobiographical piece here is uh, part of this Kilgore quarterly. He worked there and so we have a one pager on the back here as well. So how to continue? I think maybe with the fat elephant in the room because Fante Bukowski, an American dream, is uh, by far the most ambitious and longest and most important work by Noah van Skyver about this guy here, Fante Bukowski, which is of course not his real name. He is a writer who suffers big uh, illusions of grandeur. He th thinks of him as the next uh, uh, sensation in, in literature and because of that he does that what every uh, great author before him did. Uh, he lives in a small hotel uh, room in a hotel and um, writes on an old typewriter, some mechanical device here. And He's not, obviously, he's not as great as he thinks. This is made pretty clear when you read uh, one of the quotes of his uh, works there. Um, he is a self-obsessed a-hole, to um, swear in some kind of Mormonic way here, Mormon way. He weaves a lot of tropes into this huge plot and I guess you just have to read this book. It's This one is not a recommendation, this is just a necessity to read this book here. Just one tiny remark here, if you're German like me, don't uh, pick up the German one and if you're able to read the English one instead, go for it. Because in the German one they use this uh, computer for, which mimics um, handwrite, hand lettering. In my mind, this is the worst uh, stuff that you can do, especially when you use letters that are so, in a way, very special. But uh, after reading some sentences, you see that it's always the same H, for instance, always the same E. And this triggers me, <laughs> in a way. But here you can see uh, wha what I meant with uh, the coloring from um, Noah van Skyver that I really love is handmade coloring with uh, crayons and watercolors. And this fits his uh, so deceivingly cru uh, crude and, and uh, off the cuff uh, way of creating his panels. Uh, it's such a good match uh, that I really worry if this can be reproduced uh, by uh, with computer colors as well. Overall, the story is very well rounded and the end um, really makes you like that guy, believe it or not. Um, he's so full of himself and, and at some points uh, in the story, you really hate that you would, but it's always enough stuff uh, that is interesting that pulls you through the story, no, no doubt about it. And in the end, you think, hey, Fante Bukowski, that's me. <laughs> Maybe, and I think in particular of myself, that's fortunately a long gone me from way back then, but I once was like this guy here, full of myself and maybe, and I'm pretty sure that Noah Van Skyver put a lot of himself into this character here as well. And that's make, that makes uh, Noah Van Skyver's story so interesting, so realistic. Um, 
that they have this realistic quality, even if they are dealing with historic figures like Abraham Lincoln, for instance, in um, his very first graphic novel, the hypo here, about yeah the struggles of young Lincoln. Um, he was a lawyer in uh, in the times way back then, and he uh, has problems with his relationships or to get into some kind of relationship at all. Uh, he struggles with the with his high moral standards and the moral standards of the society back then, and uh, being very uptight, which was pretty typical for uh, the period, I think, for the era. That all adds up to a pretty realistic um, portrait, not only of Abraham Lincoln, but of that uh, of people way back then. Uh, even though his uh, art style, Norman Skyver's art style, was clearly a bit more um, rougher than today, but this is a really interesting read and a uh, very fulfilling read. Satisfying read, I wanted to say. So, the only book that I have left is Disquiet, an anthology in a an hardcover here uh, from Fantagraphics. Yeah. With Standalone artwork from Noah Van Skyver, but first and foremost, of course, a lot of interesting stories. In particular, uh, the very first one here is one of these father-son stories. Um, no coincidence at all that this man here is called Harvey, like Noah Van Skyver's dad. And he looks uh, very much the same, like uh, the man in One Dirty Tree. Even though the son that comes to visit him here uh, is called Nathan. But it's obvious that uh, Noah puts actually himself into uh, this uh, figure here. And so, yeah, that's not a tender portrait of his father, uh, not at all. Um, he's he makes stupid jokes and and is uh, is very egoistic in a way and up to the point that his son visits uh, his dad at night with a pistol. Yeah. Fortunately, he doesn't pull the trigger, so but it's a sad story, nevertheless. Here we have a little more glimpses into American history, like um, he always flips back and forth uh, from nowadays and his uh, autobiographical stuff into past times where he can is able to find a lot of the stuff that relates more or less to him like uh as i said it um there's a novel about the founding father of the mormon church or a church of the latter days i think it's the correct name uh, joseph smith uh, that he's working on right now so that was my little portrait or review overview about the works of noah van Skyver. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.